Okay, so we are studying the bilinear transformations from complex plane to complex plane. So let me very briefly recall what we are trying to do. So we have a complex plane, we have another complex plane. Here the variable is z. Uh, oh, right. Z is the independent variable. I write it as x plus i y. And here the w is going to be b plus i b. That's the variable here. Z plane to w plane. I have map in particular. I have the map I'm interested in considering is the map of the type uh, z going to w of z which is a z plus b divided by c z plus b where a b minus b c is not equal to zero and a b c d are complex numbers. It can be any complex numbers under this solution. We have seen that such a thing is called a bilinear transformation, other names for it are fractional linear transformation or a Mobius transformation. Uh, <coughs> fractional linear, you can see if you know what linear transformation, you know that you will understand the meaning of this, but do not bother. This is our definition. Uh, and also we have seen that uh, uh, this function is conformal. Conformal means it preserves angles. The angles do not get changed when I go from here to here. That means if you take a curve here and I take, it, take its image, take another curve, take its image, at this point of intersection, whatever is this angle, this angle will also be the same. That is what conformal means. And this is conformal if w dash z is not equal to 0. So w dash z not equal to 0 corresponds to this condition. So since I have my bilinear transformation always satisfying this property, I know that all my bilinear transformations are conformal. This is what we have studied. In this, we saw a few examples where, for example, v is 0, c is 0, d is 1. A is some complex number, some real number to start with, and we saw that there is a uh, magnification, and then for various examples, when the A is one and other things, then we write it as the plus B is translation. This can also be rotation, and you can be here, you might have a rest of A, and we also saw uh, that C is one, B is zero, A is one, and B is zero, that uh, is one by Z, that is inverse, uh, inversion of uh, complex plane. Things which are far away come inside and go inside the unit circle, and whatever inside the unit circle will go very far. And we also saw one more thing. You know what I'm recalling what we have done. Uh, we also had the notion of extended plane. This means uh, it's not just complex numbers in my plane, there is also an infinity. There's only one infinity. Uh, so complex numbers, linear infinity is what is called extended plane. And only thought there are many beautiful geometric properties and algebraic properties of the plane. But what interests us in this course is that one by infinity is zero. And please, I just want to emphasize there's only one infinity. That means whether you go on this line or this line or this line, you hit the same infinity. So that's what we are interested in. That this property of infinity, there is only one infinity and it has the property that one by infinity is zero. This is what we need to use. Using this, what we have done, we have seen infinity goes to where? Means z equal to infinity. I have this bilinear transformation given by z plus b divided by cz plus b, where a b minus b is one and zero. I want to see where does infinity go. So how did I do that? I multiply and divide it by z, which means divide numerator and denominator by z, and then a plus b by z divided by c plus b by z. So 1 by z is 0, in the sense z is infinity. So I get a by z. So what I know is under binding a transformation, infinity goes to a by z. As we know, that's a finite point if c is not 0. And uh, uh, another thing is what comes to infinity? That means um, which point comes to infinity? This has to be infinity. Denominator has to be zero. That means cz plus b is zero, which means z is equal to 
minus b by c. So uh, minus b by c comes to infinity. Infinity goes to a by c. Minus b by c comes to infinity. These are the two things which you need to keep keep in mind when you are studying bilinear transformations. Uh, what this is, I think this is where we stop. Ah, no, we also did invariant points. So invariant points of W z equal to a z plus b divided by c z. Invariant points means those points which do not move, which that means the point and its base must be same. That means W z must be equal to z. That means z is equal to a z plus b divided by c z plus b. You rewrite this as a quadratic thing with z and get the solutions. You know the solution of quadratic equation is minus b plus r minus z is equal to z plus a. So use that and get that. So I have done this in the last single class. So I won't spend time again on this. So what all we know? We know the definition of bilinear transformation. We know bilinear transformation is conformal because of this condition. You know our bilinear transformation is from the extended plane, which means I consider infinity and the only algebra property of infinity I'm interested in in this course is 1 by infinity 0. We know infinity goes to a by c. Under this bilinear transformation, where does the point infinity go? It goes to a by c. C may be 0, then infinity goes to infinity. Uh, and also, this is the point which comes to infinity. That means in the W plane, there is infinity. Where does what which point? Z plane comes to infinity is minus b plus c. Of course, you see 0 is infinity. That doesn't matter. And we know invariant points of a bilinear transformation. How to find it? If z is equal to z plus c over c z plus b, rewrite this as a quadratic thing z. Cross multiply c z square plus b equal to z plus b. Take it that side. Take a quadratic equation. Something is z square plus something z plus something equal to 0. And write the rules. All this we have done last. So now let's go ahead. Next question. We have a very interesting question. We are talking of, uh, remember, we are, we are talking of uh, bilinear transformations. We are telling various, like basically, to tell a bilinear transformation means you must tell me what are A, B, C, and D, or you must tell me where every point is going. Means actually, theoretically define the map. Where does 0 go? For example, in this 0 is going to be by you. So I'll tell you what to be by you. Then where does 1 go? Where does i go? Where does 2 i go? That is all complex number, where do they go? That is what I have to explain. But that is too tedious. Means, is it really required? That's the question. Means, do I, to specify a bilinear transformation, do I have to tell where every z is going? Is the question. By looking at the form of bilinear transformation, so let me start writing it. The bilinear transformation is W is equal to AZ plus B divided by CZ plus B. By looking at this form of uh, bilinear transformation, it looks like, you know, I want to determine A, B, C, and D. To determine this, I need to know basically these four are the unknowns. A, B, C, D are unknowns. Means if you want to specify a bilinear transformation, you have to tell me what are A, B, C, D. So that, that's what I don't know a priori. So if I'm going to specify, for example, so this is W Z. For example, if I say Z1 goes to W1, what does this mean? This means W1 is equal to A Z1 plus B divided by C Z1 plus B. This is what W of W of Z1 is W1 means this. Similarly, W of Z2 is W2. That means Z2 goes to W2, which means W2 is equal to AZ2 plus B divided by CZ2 plus B. Right? This is what meaning of somebody goes to somebody means image of this guy is this. Image means this is the image of Z. So I replace Z by Z1, I get W1 in this. So it's algebraically, it just means W1 is equal to AZ1 plus B divided by CZ1 plus B. Similarly, W2. Like this, how many points should I keep doing? Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, like this. And keep on doing. 
do I really have to do? That's the question. So you can see your PPT. Uh, that's the question. To specify a bilinear transformation, does one have to specify image of every point in Z? That's the question. So uh, basically, again, let me. At the risk of boring you, let me emphasize this. Specifying a bilinear transformation means tell me the values of A, B, C, D. Correct? That's what specifying bilinear transformation means. So, if I want to specify this, I need to tell you what are A, B, C, D. How do I find A, B, C, D? How many points must you tell me? That means if Z1 goes to W1, I get one equation in A, B, C, D. Here I know Z1, I know W1. I know means that's the Specification I'm trying to give that my bilinear transformation must take one to two i something like that. One must go to one must go to two i. Three must go to five i something. I think. So like each specification will give me one equation in A B C D. I have four unknowns A B C D. If I want to solve, looks like I need to specify four points. That means if you tell me. W3 is equal to AZ3 plus G divided by C plus G plus D and W4 is equal to AZ4 plus G divided by C Z4 plus D. If I tell four points, I have four equations, four unknowns A, B, C, D, I can solve. Looks like that, it's not correct. Huh? Uh, but there is a small uh, shortcut or not shortcut. Uh, over, over determination is what I have done here. Then, uh, so I will try to explain this. You see, when you specify a bilinear transformation, looks like there are four unknowns, but actually there aren't four unknowns because you see, you multi you, for example, in this, say both C and D are not zero. That we know, right? Which are three, sorry. This uh, for this to be a bilinear transformation, I want A B minus B C to be not zero, which means both C and D cannot be zero. Both C and D are zero, this is zero, but I'm telling you it is not zero. So both C and D are not zero. One of them is definitely non zero. So let's assume D is not zero for time being. You see, for time being, you assume C is not zero, you get the same similar answer. If D is not zero, I can multiply and divide this by D. That means W Z to AZ plus D divided by D divided by CZ plus D divided by D. I can do this. This is same as A by D, A by DZ plus D by D divided by C by DZ plus 1. But you, if instead of D not 0, C or not 0, I will have divided by C both numerator and denominator. So here, so here, I have only three unknowns, A by D, D by D, C by D. Only three unknowns. So, actually I don't need four points to be specified. Just to specify three points, I will be able to solve for A by D, B by D, C by D. If I can always multiply by any, multiply and divide by any complex number, this function will remain the same. So multiply this by three, but number three, A, three, B, B, C, B, D, it's the same. Function, it's not going to change. The multiply divided by the same complex number, the function will not change. So here I multiply and divide by D. You can multiply and divide by C, you can multiply and divide by A, multiply and divide by D, any one of them you can do. In any case, you will end up with only three unknowns. So the upshot of this is if you specify three points, you can be where Z1 goes, where Z2 goes, where Z3 goes, I will be able to determine A, B, C, D. That's what I'm trying to do. So I don't need just three point specification will suffice. I know it's a bit abstract. Let me give you a specific example that should clear your problem. So that's what I have told here. In other words, one tries to answer the question images of how many points must be known uniquely to determine the bilinear transformation AZ plus B divided by CZ plus B. So all whatever is there on your PPT, I already told just now. Uh, not waste my time on this. Let me show you an explicit problem. Let me try to solve one problem and show. So, if you see your PPT, it says uh, find find the uh, it should be BLT. I return LT. 
uh, bilinear transformation which maps points z equal to 1 to w equal to i z equal to i to w equal to 0 z equal to minus 1 to w equal to minus i let me write this down find bilinear transformation which maps One to z equal to one to w equal to i z equal to uh, i to w equal to zero and z equal to minus one to w equal to minus i. I want to find a binary, so try to understand again. Let's be for the first one problem. I'll try to give you all that detail, but always I will not do this. So, this is my z plane and this is my w plane. The question is find a bilinear transformation. You have to find a bilinear transformation. What should that bilinear transformation do? Z equal to 1, that is here. That must go to W equal to I. W equal to I is here. So that means this point must go here. Z equal to I to W equal to 0. Z equal to I is this point. This point must go to W equal to 0. And Z equal to minus 1, that is this point, must go to Z equal to 1 to go to W equal to 0. This is W equal to I. And this is Z equal to minus 1. Should go to where w equal to minus one. This is what I want. Of course, obviously, it's a messy diagram. Who want to see such a thing? In fact, what I'm asking is, can you draw a line like this, like this arrow line from every point? I don't want to be pretty sure. It's impossible to do that. So I want to do this algebraically. So I'll write this down. I want z1 going to Z1 equal to 1 going to W1 equal to I, right? These kind of things once at least. Z2 equal to I goes to W2 equal to 0. Z3 equal to minus 1 goes to W3 equal to minus 1. This is what is expected. I have not done anything. I just read it as the problem. Z1 Goes to the blue one, z2 goes to the blue two, z3 goes to the blue two. And I don't value z1 for z1, z2, z3. It might be w1, w2. That's all. Now, I know it's a bilinear transformation, means it must look like this wz is equal to az plus b divided by cz plus b. Okay, so what I will do is I will set up three equations for this bilinear transformation. Now, what I will do is I will set up three equations using this. I will put z1, z1, z1 equal to 1. And W equal to I then. Z equal to 1 and this, W equal to 1. Don't get confused with Z1 and Z. Z is the running variable. Z1 is a specific complex number. So if I substitute Z equal to 1 in this, I get W equal to I. Similarly, if I substitute Z equal to I, I get W equal to 0. If I substitute Z equal to minus 1, I get W equal to minus I. That is my requirement. That is what the problem says. So let us substitute all these three and see what happens. So if I substitute this, what will I get? Uh, I is equal to A times 1 plus B divided by C times 1 plus B. And similarly for this, I get 0 is equal to Z equal to I A times I plus B divided by C times I plus B. And also finally, we put Z A equal to minus 1 and instead W equal to minus 1. That means minus I is equal to Z is minus 1 to C minus 1 plus B. This is what I get. I get three equations and there are four unknowns. But I'll not be worried because I know I told you these four unknowns are non thousand It's just for their sake. We will actually actually dealing with the three variables. So let us attack this problem. So this means first equation I can rewrite it as 
a plus b is equal to i c plus i b. From this step, I draw some. This says the second one is very easy. A plus i b equal to z. Third one says minus c plus b. Oh, sorry. Minus a plus b plus multiply this uh, c i minus b i equal to c. Right. So here also I take this right hand side and left hand side. Save my energy and just find it here equal to c. A plus b minus c here. A plus b minus c i minus D I equal to C. Second one says this one is zero. The numerator is zero. So A plus I B is zero. Third one says minus A plus B minus A plus B. We cross multiply and take it back side. So C into minus A to minus I plus D I and I take it this side. Ah, uh, it should be minus. Zero. Minus C I minus D I. And plus short So these are the three equations I get. I hope I'm correct. Just to check, I will see what I have already done. Normally, I am liable to make such mistakes. So these are the three equations. Uh, three uh, substitute the values. I is equal to a into one plus b divided by c into one plus d. Zero equal to a i plus b divided by c i plus d. Minus i is equal to a minus one plus b. Into minus one plus b, correct. So these three equations are a plus b minus c i minus b i is zero. A plus i b is zero. Minus a plus b minus c i plus b i is zero. So this is correct. No problem. Uh, this. So these are three equations, and I have four unknowns. How we want to solve this? So I just I told you, even though there are four unknowns, there are actually three unknowns. So we will try to solve this. Uh, how do I solve this? So let me add these two. If I add these two, a and a will get cancelled, b will get doubled, b will get cancelled, c i will get doubled, and everything equal to zero. So I get uh, b minus i c equal to zero. So a two will get, two will get cancelled. So I get this and this. Right? Let me check. Adding first and third, we get b minus i c equal to zero. That's correct. And so now uh, we use these. See now, what will happen is probably b is vanished. We have two equations and two unknowns. A and b are two unknowns. Oh, three unknowns and two equations. Doesn't matter. We use same rule. So let me write down these two equations clearly. Uh, If we write down these equations, it says a plus i b equal to zero. So let me write down. I need to keep this. So let me write this one. I want one going to i, i going to zero, and minus one going to minus i. Using using this, I got a plus i b equal to zero and b. Minus I C equal to zero. These are the two equations I have. Right? I made a mistake. Let me just check. No, it's correct. So there is no problem. So this using my usual grammar rule, what will I get? A divided by I get this determinant. Right? The determinant says one zero one minus I equal to B if I B and the remaining rows or columns or whatever you want to call it, one zero zero minus i is equal to c divided by this determinant. Is the variable there? So one i zero one. This is the. Uh, let me check. Uh, let me check. Let me check. One zero one minus i i. 
one zero looks like. I might have made a mistake. One zero zero minus five. What I have done here is see one zero minus five. Oh, minus sign. So, no, I think this is no problem. Uh, even if it does not get, take a sign action. Maybe this is a minus here, plus or minus here. Uh, minus is there, no? I think there is a minus here. So, that I'm confident that there is an activity. Uh, so, let like this be equal to some constant, which we are all equal. So let's call this say uh, thumb, thumb thumb. Now, if you solve this, you will get. So please go home and do it. I will not redo the whole thing. I will divide it into the I will get A is equal to. I will copy it down. Uh, B is equal to minus A, and C is equal to uh, I. Now this is what I have tried to tell you. And using this, uh, you see. You substitute all this in your uh, first equation. First equation is this one. A plus B minus, because this is what, these are the two equations in which B is there. So if I substitute A, B, C in this, I get B also in terms of K. You go home and see, you get B equal to minus K. So B is minus K. So you substitute all this A, B, C, D in my original transformation. So that means WZ is equal to A is equal to minus I. So minus I times K. So okay, let's for once we'll write A Z plus B times minus K divided by C Z I K times Z plus B minus K. You see there is K as a linear term and we have really one. So K will get cancelled. So what I get is minus i z minus one divided by uh, i z minus one. This is what I have. Now let us check. Uh, I mean, this is my answer. I want to just check whether I have it correctly or not. So one goes to i. <coughs> so put z equal to one and see what happens. So put z, w one is equal to uh, minus i minus one divided z equal to one is what I am doing. So I minus one. So you multiply and divide by I plus one. I plus one divided by I plus one. I want to this is a rational uh, this is equal to I square minus one that will become two. I square is minus two minus two. So this is minus two and this will become uh, so uh, that. So if I take I plus one whole square, so minus of I plus one whole square. So this is uh, I square plus 2i, so minus 2i. Go home and check this. One more. So you can see it. Isn't it? I take minus common, this is minus of i plus 1, and then i plus 1 whole square. i plus 1 whole square, you know what is the usual algebra, i square is minus 1, 1 square is 1, plus 2i. 1 minus 1 is 0, so I get minus 2i. That's what I have. This is equal to i. So one does go to i and have this map, so it satisfies this condition. Similarly, I want to check for the other two conditions. So let me do that. All this is not required, this is our simple algebra. So <coughs> if you put z equal to i in this, what happens? Now put z equal to i, so let us check that w of i is if you put z equal to i, so minus i square, minus i, I square is minus 1. So let's do the algebra z equal to i, I get minus i square, i square is minus 1, minus i square is plus 1, plus 1 minus 1 is 0. I don't care what happens here. It's not, it's not, it's not 0. So z is i, uh, yeah, that is i, i square is minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2. So it's not 0. So numerator is 0, so w i is 0. So when we under this transformation, i goes to 0. Similarly, I want to check the last one. W of minus 1 is equal to uh, substitute minus i into minus 1 minus 1 divided by minus uh, divided by i into minus 1 minus 1. This is uh, i minus 1 
i minus 1 divided by uh, minus of i plus 1. This is the same as the reciprocal of this. The reciprocal of i is minus i, we all know that. Right? So this is equal to minus i. Most of you need to understand this. Go home and rationalize this and see what, what the answer is. So you become minus i. So what I'm trying to tell you is this is the check. When somebody asks me, find a bilinear transformation, it says this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, this point. I set up three equations and solve for A, B, C, and D. I see that the K gets cancelled and I get WZ is equal to this. Answer is over. Just to check whether my, what I have done is correct or not, I have done this extra bit where I check that each of those three points go to where I expect them to. So this is how you find binary transition. This is not magic or this is not coincidence that even though with three questions I could solve for four unknowns. They are actually not four unknowns because as I explained to you, I can multiply and divide by one of the non-zero ABC. Not all can be zero. So one plus IZ minus one minus I. Yeah, that's all. So both are same. What I written here and there are same. So observe how three is. Yeah. So this general method of Writing these equations instead of writing initial values for Z1, W1, Z2, W2, Z3, W3, I'll write it abstractly. That means uh, W1 is equal to AZ1 plus BZ, B divided by CZ1 plus B. And similarly for Z2 and Z3, if I do that, I will get a general formula. So I am trying to tell you what the general formula is in your exam. Use the formula or you can use first principles as we did just now. You can set up three equations and try to solve for ABCD. If you don't want to do it, I am not going to write the details of this formula. I'll write the formula, but I will not write the proof of it. Uh, it's not difficult, but I will not write it here. So, a bilinear transformation, not the only one, a bilinear transformation which Z1 to W1, Z2 to W2, and Z3 to W3 is given by a useful formula to remember in the examination. I can't remember, I'll just point it out from the PPT. Uh, it's not difficult to remember. W minus W1 divided by W2 minus W3 divided by uh, W minus W3 W3 W2 minus W1 is equal to Z minus Z1 divided by Z2 minus Z3 divided by Z minus Z3 Z2 minus Z3 uh, I told you it's not very difficult to prove this result, but I'll not bother to do that in this class. You need to know. Basically, you have to do that determinant uh, Kramer's rule. You have to use slight modification. I will not bother too much. This is the I mean, it looks like, I mean, I am not talking about, I told you binary transformation should look like W equal to AZ plus B divided by CZ plus B. I am not telling you what are A, B, C, D. You can evaluate this. W minus, see, W1, W2, W3, Z1, Z2, Z3 are given to me. So these are all complex numbers, except for this and this, which is Z minus Z1 divided by Z minus Z2. This is W minus W1, W minus W3. You have to or make W the subject of formula. That means you have to rewrite this as W equal to something times Z plus something. Divided by W times Z plus something. You can rewrite this. How to do it? I'll tell you in a specific example. That will be the binary transformation. Let us, before uh, I won't do this, so before we attack the formula, let me try to show you that this formula is indeed correct. Uh, let us put z equal to z1 for example. I want 
in this transformation, suppose z equal to z1, I want w to be equal to w1. Here not w1, w2, w3, z1, z2, 3 are all distinct. They are all not equal to each other. All three are distinct. In mutually they are pairwise distinct. So if I put z equal to z1, this will become zero. If I put z equal to z1, this will become zero. This will become that means this is also zero. This is zero means numerator must be zero. Numerator is zero means I know w2, w3 are distinct. So w must be equal to w1. That's what we wanted to say. That image of z1 is w1. So if you put z equal to z1, I get w equal to w1. Careful. So if I put z equal to z1 in this above formula, right hand side is zero. Then LHS also must be zero. LHS zero means numerator must be zero. Numerator is zero means this into this is zero. So one of them must be zero. This is not zero because I told you all we are uh, distinct. Mutually pairwise distinct. So W2 is not equal to W3. So this is not zero. So this must be zero, which means W equal to W. So that means Z1 goes to W. That means in this formula, if you put Z equal to Z1, I'll get W equal to W. That means Z1 goes to W. Similarly, you can check for the others also. If you put Z equal to Z2, what happens? If you put Z equal to Z3, what happens? I mean, I can tell you overall. If you put Z equal to Z2, you see these two will get cancelled. Z2 minus Z1, Z2 minus Z1 will get cancelled. Here I get Z2 minus Z3, this was also become 1. Right? So we get cancelled. This one thing is 1. That means there also they must be equal. For that, we check that W equal to W2 is the only way where both these can be equal. Because as I told you already, all three famous they are distinct. And similarly, if you put Z equal to Z3, if you put Z equal to Z3, what happens? Ah, this denominator becomes 0. Denominator is 0 means this whole thing is infinity. So this also must be infinity. That means here denominator is 0. Denominator is 0 to W must be equal to W. That means Z equal to Z3 will go to W equal to W. So we have checked that all three, Z1 will go to W1, Z2 will go to W2, Z3 will go to W3 under this transformation. So this is the what this is the transformation which I was looking for. So binding a transformation is actually given by this. It's not difficult to remember this formula. You see 1, 2, 3, cycle 3, 3, 2, 1. Same thing with this. 1, 2, 3, cycle 3, 3, 2, 1. And of course, I think the reverse, reverse of that. Similarly, here are one thing, whatever is there, the fix here, we will drop the W answer. The formula is easy to remember, it's not difficult. Uh, and I've shown you that this formula actually works. So let's use this formula for the previous case. Uh, previous case, what was the previous case? So let me erase this. Uh, let's use the previous, I don't remember what was the previous case. Uh, what was the question? This was the So z put z1 equal to 1, w1 is equal to i, and z1 is equal to uh, i w2. Sorry, z1. This two is i. Z3 is minus 1, w3 is minus i. I want this bilinear transformation which takes z1, z2, z3 to w1, w2. I substitute all this there. So that means W minus I into W2 minus W3. W2 minus W3 is I. 0 minus minus I. 0 minus minus I divided by W2 minus W3. W3 minus W3. Into W2 minus W1. W2 minus W3. 0 minus i is equal to so I have to write the same thing for z. So let me quickly write it z minus 1 into z2 minus z3 divided by uh, z minus minus 1 into uh, z2 minus z3 minus. 
Some formula. Uh, come up with some questions. Must be here. Let me. I hope I've done this. Yeah. Yeah. So find bilinear transformation which maps z1 to z1 sorry z1 equal to minus one, z2 equal to zero, z3 equal to one, two. That means w1 is equal to zero. W, so this should go to W2 is equal to I and W3 is equal to 3i. Want, so the question is find bilinear transformation such that these three happen. So again, it is the same formula W minus W1 into W. So this is the formula that we rewrite it here. W minus W1 divided by W2 minus W2 divided by W minus W3 W2 minus W1 is equal to Z minus Z1 into Z2 minus Z3 divided by 
divided by z minus z into two minus. So we substitute these six values into this appropriate stock. So w minus zero is w two minus w three. So i minus three i divided by w minus w three w two equal to z minus z one is one so I just write I will get if you try to do this and that will be this case so zero minus one divided by z minus one the two minus the one so this is let's try to see what this is this is w into minus two i divided by w minus three i into i is equal to z plus one into minus one divided by z minus one i i will get cancelled or minus will get cancelled so this is same as two w z minus one there i get this two w i will get cancelled and one minus will get cancelled that uh, will be equal to this z plus one into w minus is what so this you try to expand and see this is what I try to do last time 2 w z minus 2 w is equal to z w minus 3 z i uh, plus w minus 3 i right z into w z into minus 3 i one w one. I just take all the blues at one place and rest in W that. So what will I get? There is a W set. So this means W Z and taking that this side so minus two minus two W minus W minus three W. Uh, is equal to uh, z minus 3 z i minus 3 i z that's what i'll write this and minus 3 i so this means w z minus 3 equal to this so minus uh, 3 i uh, z minus 3 i divided by z minus this is the, this should be the answer. W is then equal to this. Check. Z equal to minus 1. You have to check this. So go home and check that this is actually correct. I hope I have done it uh, correctly. I get 3i to z plus 1. Yeah, 3i will take a common and denominator minus it. That's all. So what I got here and what I got here are three. So you can check. Now, so this is nothing much and I don't want to spend too much time on this. Given six points, we substitute them in this. But what is important for me here is, uh, I have 10 minutes. Uh, if one of these points become infinity, what happens to the formula? So let me, uh, let me read this. This is the formula I had. What I want to tell you is the following. One of this z1, w1, z2, w2, z3, w3 is infinity. Then what happens? For example, uh, I want to say z1 goes to infinity. This is the binary transformation I want. So what should I do here? Z1, you see z1 is infinity. If I write infinity here, this whole thing will become infinity. If I write infinity here, this whole thing will become infinity. Infinity by infinity is indeterminate. Be a problem. But I will use the fact that one by infinity is zero. So what I do is I divide this by z one. If I divide this by z one, I get z by z one minus one. And there I get 
z2 by z1 minus 1. When I take z1 as infinity, this will become 0, this will become 0. And this will be minus 1 and this will be minus 1. So it will become minus 1 by minus 1, 1. <coughs> so if I take z1 equal to infinity, what I will do is I put both the terms which have z1. I will put these terms equal to 1 and rewrite the formula. W minus W1 into W2 minus W3 divided by W minus W3 W2 minus W1 is equal to Z2 minus Z3 divided by Z minus Z3. This is what the formula is. Basically, both the terms which have Z1, I put them equal to 1. I am not putting it equal to 1. I am dividing this, both these by Z1 and then take like Z1 is infinity. You see that this is minus 1 by minus 1, which is 1. So, just as a mnemonic, you can see Z1 is infinity. Both the terms which have Z1, I put them equal to 1. That's all you remember. Or if Z2 is infinity, instead of Z1, Z2 is infinity, I'll put these two equal to 1. Same story. Divide by Z2, divide by this by Z2. So I'll get 1 minus Z3 by Z2, 1 minus Z1 by Z2. If Z2 is infinity, these terms will become 0, 0, 0, 1. Same story for infinity, uh, W is not infinity also. So for example, if this and for example W2 is infinity, let's just take this. If Z2 goes to infinity, that means W2 is infinity. And divide both the terms by W2. So then I get minus 1 by minus 1 here. The other terms will remain same. In that case, the formula this is uh, if W1 is infinity, W2 is infinity, then what happens? This first one was if Z1 equal to infinity, what happens? W2 is infinity. W minus W1, these two terms I put it as 1. So W minus W3 equals the rest of it is same. So Z minus Z1 into Z2 minus Z3 divided by Z minus Z3 into Z2 minus Z3. This is the nice So if one of them is infinity, you can always put that particular portion which has both the terms equal to 1. So similarly, if W3 is infinity, then I will put this and this as 1. So I will remain only these two terms will remain on the left hand side and these three terms, these four terms will be on the left hand side. So let's pick up one example and then I hope we are done. Oh, looks like I'm not, I don't have a formula here, huh? it's there. So if one of the points, so the problem is given there. Uh, what is the problem? Find DIT which maps 0 to 1. Uh, so what? Anything. So, so 0 to 3, 1, uh, minus 2 and infinity to minus 1. How to do this? So in this case, you see Z3 is infinity. So I put these two terms to 1. So which means W, so these are Z1, Z2, Z3. This is Z1, Z2, Z3. So this is W1, this is W2, this is W3. So Z3 is infinity here. Yeah? I want this kind of bilinear transform. There is 0 to 3, 1 to minus 2, infinity to minus 1. So Z3 is infinity. So these two terms become 1. So rest of them I have to write it as it is. W minus W1 is 3 into W2 minus W3. That is minus 1 into plus 1 divided by uh, W minus W3, W plus 1. W2 minus W1. W2 minus W1. Minus 5 is equal to Z minus Z1. That is Z. Z1 is 0. And this side don't have a bother. So Z minus Z3. Oh, sorry. So this side don't have a bother. This side don't have a bother. Z2 minus, uh, Z2 minus Z1, which is 1. So you rewrite this W equal to something. Whatever answer you get, that is going to be your binary. So I have many more 
examples like this. Uh, I have written the problems here. Uh, how much time? I have five minutes. Oh, it's over, I think. If I have time, I'll do one more problem. There's no issue. There's no problem on that. Uh, let us try to solve this problem. This is a very nice, easy problem. So let me try to do this. Uh, this is an instructive problem. This means a very instructive problem. So let us do this. In this, I want zero going to zero, uh, one going to i, and uh, minus one going to minus i. You see, moment to look at it, you should be able to already tell what this bilinear transformation is. So, I want zero to go to zero, one to go to i, one to go to i, minus one to go to minus i. That means basically it's a rotation. By 90 degrees. A rotation by 90 degrees means um, it should be multiplication by i. That means I know answer must be w equal to i z. That means a equal to 1, b equal to 0, c, sorry, a equal to i, b equal to 0, c equal to 1, c equal to 0, and b equal to 1. I know this. And uh, substitute these values in that and see whether I get this. So this I want to check. So w minus W1 is 0, I will not bother about it. W2 minus W3. That is I plus I will be 2i, I will be a bit quick. W minus W3. So that is W plus I into W2 minus W1. So this will be just I. This will be equal to Z minus Z1. That is Z. Z2 minus Z3. That is Z2. And Z minus Z3. Z plus 1 into Z2 minus Z1. That is one. So to simplify this, so I I get cancelled here, and uh, two T gets cancelled here, and I get W by W plus I is equal to Z by Z plus one. Uh, so if you take the reciprocal, I get uh, W plus I by W is equal to Z plus one by Z, which means I by W is equal to one one will get cancelled, which means W equal to IZ as I expected. W equal to IZ as was expected. This rotation by uh, So I'll stop here. You know, there will be many more questions like this where three points are given and you have to find what the image uh, They give you the image points and find what the value of the image is. Tomorrow we will continue with the next one.